let me just do a really brief recap of that. <laughs> so we have uh, we had three prize winners. First, uh, third place, Marie Tamsey with a Bones for Life wrap. Uh, second place, Liz Albright with private session for Brian. And third place, Kate with the Bones for Life immersion one. <sighs> so you'd think we'd get so fabulous that at uh, technology, we wouldn't forget these things, but we still do as much time as we spend online. Um, good. Okay. So I'm going to head right into sharing with you about um, the upcoming program, because it's what most of you have tuned in for today. And we've done our, our connecting through our Bouncing on Heels, which I think is really important as we come together each time around Bounce for Life work. And now we'll go into get the winners out of the way, which is not really out of the way. We're, but we, you wanted to hear those, didn't you? In case it was you, and you met Darby. So let's go into let's go into this. Okay. So it's time for a skeletal transformation. And uh, I want you to really try to sit for a moment with this idea of skeletal. What would a skeletal transformation be? What would a skeletal transformation be? This will be our Bones for Life 2022-23 program. And that means that anybody who starts this year uh, would have a chance to actually finish the teacher training by the end of next year. So what is it that we're looking to improve? Well, we're certainly looking to improve safe movement. We're looking to improve safe movement. We heard this comment, uh, I think it was from Liz about squatting. My, no, I, I'm not sure, I know, I think I got them wrong. It's got it wrong, so sorry about that. I'm mixing it up already. Um, but, but you know, these are the kinds of functional movements that we want to have restored or made better in our lives. And we also want to improve our balance. And why do we want to improve our balance? Well, because it is the fastest, most consistent way for reducing fracture risk. Yes, we also want to improve bone health. That is a multifaceted program. And in order to improve bone health, and frankly, to some degree, a bit unknown how it can be done consistently, the science still a bit, um, it still needs a lot more to go with it, right? We know, we know some things from that talk that you can take advantage of. And then there might be some other things that you want to put in the mix. And we're suggesting that Bones for Life is one of those things that you can put in the mix. It makes sense to us that it can improve bone health, despite the fact that we don't yet have research on that. And it may, and we know, we know it improves the quality of movement so that people can do more in their life of what they want to do and that it improves balance. But what is the deeper change that can take place? And do we talk about these sort of things? Uh, physically, but what are the deeper changes? And I'd like you to put some of those up in the chat. What do you think are some of the deeper changes that can happen through this somatic approach called Bones for Life? Maybe you've already been experiencing them. So if you pop those in the chat, I'm going to start. Um, yeah, good, good. Congratulations to the winners. I love that. So uh, we have, let me try to make this large. Aviva says awareness and creativity in movement. David, feeling gravity going up and down. Jackie, brain plasticity. Well, what would that mean to you, Jackie? Brain plasticity. Uh, yes, good. Uh, Nancy releases a ton more joy. And Nancy's been taking the program. Rachel, brand new teacher. Increased somatic awareness allows greater emotional health and better mental health. Mm. Catherine, confidence and movement. Elizabeth, lightness, ease, gra ease grace. <clears throat> Mary, viewing your pelvis as a gyroscope to enhance balance and movement. Hillary, better confidence and better mobility. Kate, oh, Kate, you are here. Congratulations, Kate. Um, calmness and resilience. Uh, Laura, so many, she says, so many ease and joys facing obstacles and my clutter, even my clutter with greater ease and joys. Yes, Linda, balance, right? So you guys are on it. There is deeper changes beyond the physical. <clears throat> so I, I have noticed that most people seek out these kinds of work 
works primarily because they have a physical challenge, but almost everyone gets surprised by the fact that they learn things like, yes, Kate, oh, uh, problem solving, right, problem solving, flexibly and learning new ways, exactly. These things are significant. They're significant at any stage of our life for navigating life better. So we can have confidence, we can have spontaneity, we can uh, be have the maybe express ourselves without as much fear, being able to hear our voice in the world, being able to stand for what it is we stand for, or knowing what it is we stand for and knowing what we don't know, don't stand for, not just standing for something because someone else does. So these are deeper ideas that we want to see happen for people because these can always use a little tune-up, no matter where we're at in our life. They can, we can use a little improvement, a little tune-up in these, in these other kinds of aspects of our life. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Beth. You've been reading Beth's testimonial um, in some of the uh, emails, I think. And if you haven't, you will be getting a little fuller picture of it. Beth just finished the teacher training, but she's a 47 year uh, uh, physical therapist. And I think something like 30 something as a Feldenkrais practitioner and 20 something as an assistant trainer in the Feldenkrais method. <clears throat> I don't have those numbers right in front of me and I'm kind of bad with numbers. So just take this a little bit lightly. I know the 40 something is right <laughs> about PT. And, you know, you, Beth is an, I mean, I, I know Beth is an extremely accomplished therapist and practitioner. And so she was somebody that I have jokingly said when she signed up for the program, I thought, whoa, okay, what have I, what have we got here to offer Beth? What have I got to offer Beth? And Beth talks about it in a number of ways. And certainly she talks about how it has, gives her more options for how she works with her clients and her students. But she also talks about how, as someone diagnosed with osteoporosis, she had started getting fearful about falling. She has great mobility. She didn't need more mobility. She didn't need to know how to get up and down from the floor. She knew how to do that. But she was feeling like with these extremely active grandkids that she has, that she had to be extra careful, that she didn't want to fall. She wanted to be able to run with them. She wanted to be able to run with them and keep up with them as they play with her and run around. And she indicates Bones for Life did give her that freedom that she is at, she's not living in fear. She now has a sense of her, her capacity for not just mobility, but agility in and gravity and uh, in playing with her grandkids. Nikki is uh, in the process of becoming a teacher, but, um, and I think you'll get to see uh, some of her actual video at some point here in the next week. Um, she's a yoga teacher. She, uh, she, Nikki is a powerhouse of a woman with so many things that she's pursued in depth. And she owns a yoga studio here in, this, in the greater Cincinnati area. And she tells two really uh, poignant stories about her beginning for Bones for Life because it was very personal for her. She started with Brian. She was Brian's student. And uh, the first story she tells is how she was doing yoga one day uh, in a class and a friend, uh, I assume it was the teacher, came over and decided to help her push her leg a little bit further than it was. And uh, she heard and he heard uh, an actual audible tear. And she said it felt like her hamstring had been turned into like a almost disjointed pearl necklace. Like, bad. That that's not a fun thing. And so she did physical therapy. She did a lot of things, but she says, when I was doing bones for life, the very first thing that Brian taught us, bouncing on heels, started to bring her back into a more whole function. It started to change that relationship with her hamstring. Now, I, I'm one of those people that sometimes when I hear these things, I'm like, really? Bouncing on heels did that? Isn't that incredible? It's incredible. It's incredible. The range of responses we get from people about bouncing on heels. It's incredible. And she also, a couple of years after that, 
had another injury in a yoga class where the teacher pulled on her hair in a way that really strained her neck. And she was continued to struggle with that over time. And when she started getting these differentiating movements that Brian taught her, where you're turning the head one way and then the eye or the eyes and then the head and then the shoulders, you actually may have done a version of this lesson with me uh, before this series started. We sent it out. So your eyes, your head, your neck, your shoulders, your pelvis and differentiating these parts in this way started to bring her a fuller healing with her neck. And she has now put, of course, these two things into her go-to basket for herself all the time. So when people are able to uh, find not find healing for their pain, they're able to reintegrate almost. I would say it's almost not that she wasn't, her hamstring probably wasn't healed or that her neck was still um was in any way majorly damaged, but she had a strain that she couldn't get out of. And that's going to interfere with what you want to do in your life for sure. So whether it is you want to be able to get out and walk with your dog, like we're walking with Darby and we can't count on Darby at one year old to not lunge for things. He's getting a lot better, but you know, I took him for his walk this morning and he lunged uh, you know, three times at a bird or a squirrel in a major way. Right. And I have to know that I'm not going to pull my let my arm be pulled out of the socket, let myself trip, or when he runs in front of me yet, that I'm not going to trip over him and fall. I want to know these things that I, that I can respond quickly to him. And then I want to be able to do the other things in my life that are enjoyable to me. So I'd actually don't go fishing anymore, but I would enjoy sitting on a fishing dock by a little one. I do, I do like to golf, even though very, very badly. Now, Brian, on the other hand, is a really good golfer. So you could do Bones for Life around golfing with Brian and get great tips. And also I wanted to point out uh, Lorraine Viketev. Lorraine is a Pilates teacher, personal coach. Uh, and she came into the program thinking, well, she says that it was for old people that she thought, well, you know, I have my clients. I got a lot of older clients. I probably need some options. And she said, I, I was kind of surprised that really there is a lot in Bones for Life for any age of my clients, and then I can use it. But she also felt like she didn't have as many options in Pilates that were healthy for people with osteoporosis or possible osteoporosis. And one of the most point, uh, really, I thought, uh, standout things Lorraine shared is that as a Pilates teacher all these years, which she loves the work, she loves the work, she loves all the work she studied and used. The um, she sees people do, you know, like on the reformer or their mat class, she sees them get up and look great as they walk over to put on their shoes and their clothing and, and their purse and et cetera. But then as they get ready to leave, she sees that they've come back into their old habits. And she says that with bones for life, she sees them walking out the door with their new habits. She sees them walking in the door the next week with some of their new habits. She feels it has more stickiness into function. And that's, I think, probably would be really supported in research as well. We'd love to see um, several ARM research projects around some things, right? Like Pilates, yoga, Bones for Life, uh, Feldenkrais, PT, standard set of PT exercises, perhaps. And really flesh out what are each of these things really fabulous out, right? But that's, that's probably not going to happen uh, anytime soon, but it would be such a fabulous research project. Okay, let's get into the actual details of what, um, what we can, what you can do with this program, because you've taken these three sessions, and that is like the tiniest drop in the potential of what can happen for you or for your students. So you can take it for your own health uh, or as a teacher training. Everybody starts the same though. Everyone starts the same. They start with these immersions. Now a single immersion, and you would start of course with immersion one is $450 and you would uh, need to buy a wrap as an additional 65 if you want one. Remember that the wrap is not used a huge amount. It's a big visual draw, 
but it's not used a huge amount. So you can get a lot of an immersion one without buying a wrap. You can also go and get one yourself. You're probably going to pay about the same amount because we don't actually really mark it up. It's just uh, what it takes us to get it ordered for you from the fabric store and have it direct shipped to you. If you decide to take all three immersions, and I'm going to talk about what's in an immersion in a minute, all three immersions, immersions one, two, and three, right from the beginning, and you pay for it, you save $200 that way. I don't recommend that if you're somebody who is struggling with an active injury health problem, you would want to take a single immersion. If you're fairly healthy with just some very basic sort of aches and pains and a desire to improve, I think you can definitely go ahead and uh, sign up for all three and save that $200. But if you're somebody who, you know, you feel like you're a little more fragile, like you're just not quite sure how it's going to go for you, you want to start with that immersion one. And then you can sign it for two and three later if it sounds right for you. And then there's also this option to take those three immersions, which we call basic certification for your own health. Yeah, that is a prerequisite to teacher training. So you can sign up for the entire thing in the teacher training for $3,300, and that's a savings of uh, $400. So let's go into a little more detail. Now, that one is the one that includes a convenient payment plan. That one includes three manuals that we're allowed to, uh, to get, get to you at that point because you are committed to being a teacher. And it includes the wrap. Whoops, I think I'm missing something. In, okay, I'll go in here. I'm going to go here. It includes the wrap. It's a 210 hour program. So the basic certification is 60 and the teacher certification is 90 hours with me, 36 hours of practice teaching that you arrange on your own with your friends, family, colleagues, clients, 24 hours of mentoring, which is assignments and meetings uh, with me. I at actually about four private meetings with me and then the rest is done on your own, but we decide together what it is you're going to be doing. And then the manuals, as we said before, the wraps shipped to you, a private discussion group, which is held right now on Slack and it's been going really well when we do it that way. And then also I give you access to class series that I teach for people with limited mobility and it's part of your mentoring and discussion to help you grow as a teacher. Um, if you want to be a teacher, there's some other things to think about. I ask that you attend 75% of the sessions live with your camera mostly on. And there is a final seven days that will be done in person as a, a retreat. And that allows us to really go over uh, processes that are difficult to teach online that really there's just some things you can teach online. There's some things you have to leave up to guessing. And we, we want to be able to teach those. It's also hard to teach you to be a really good observer of movement in a detailed way online. And we, we need to get in that. We need to look at the quality of touch that we use with assisting students. So we never have these kinds of problems that we heard that Nikki had. And that we also get a chance to experience the dynamics that happen when people uh, are teaching in person. And I wanna back up because I just got something out of order here. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's come back to when does this all begin? <clears throat> Each immersion, whether it's one, two, or three, is 20 to 21 hours of classroom instruction. Your replays for everybody are available indefinitely. Immersion one is a five-week program, and it's starting the week of April 11th. And you will be able to choose between three dates and times. You can choose between Mondays from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. EDT, Wednesdays and Fridays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. EDT. We're hoping this might be a little bit better for the Australians than these other options where we've had Australians staying up overnight uh, to take the program, as well as we hope that this option will be better for people who feel their health is more fragile and they can't they just feel, they worry, they're concerned about their ability to, to stay with us for a long period. So two hour slots, two, two hour slots a week instead. And then Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. EDT. So there are three options. You do need to sign up for an option. If you need to do a makeup in another week, we can't promise that the other week will be exactly the same, but you'll be able to show up in another class. You won't even have to tell us. Um, 
and and not as a regular basis. You shouldn't show up in another class every week, like take all three of them, because that will interfere with our ability to give personalized care per program. But if you need to make up a week, you can do that. And this is one of the first times we've had enough options that we could say that you could do that. Okay, let's see, we've already done this. Okay, so you can go to bonesforlife.us, bonesforlife.us. I'm trying to walk you through some of the detail from that um, page right now uh, to make it less confusing to you, to make it a little less confusing to you. Now, I wanted to, um, well, I want to say first before I talk about Andrea, I hope you've been reading each other's big ahas because they are really inspiring. Somebody saying her little forlorn cane is over in the corner because even though she's walking with a limp, she now feels like she can walk without her cane sometimes. That's phenomenal, right? And we have heard some, uh, we heard today uh, that one of the winners said she could squat. I think it was Liz that could squat. I keep making up who said what, don't I? So, so sorry about that. Um, and then there were all kinds of things about your own deep personal experience. And um, if you want to have a sense of what each person is getting from that on that level, really take a little time to read those big ahas because really the potency of this work in these small doses of three sessions that we've given you is pretty, it's pretty remarkable. It's pretty phenomenal. Like as some people said, it's crazy how much changed, how much I'm feeling by slowing down and getting these small, what I would call more like homeopathic doses of medicine, right? Uh, homeopathic doses of movement. Um, but I wanted to focus today a little bit on why people who teach others might want to take it because I feel like we did a really good job in those three sessions, maybe covering why people would take it for their own health. Andrea really wasn't that interested in it for her own health. Andrea is a Pilates teacher, yoga teacher. Uh, she also is an actress, an incredible actress, and she teaches actors. So she's a really dynamic woman. She runs and she has two kids that are now, I guess, adolescent because they were a lot younger when she was training with me. Uh, and Andrea wanted a somatic option. She had been introduced to Feldenkrais, had even taken, um, I think a year of the Feldenkrais training and then her family moved and she couldn't get back into a program. And so she thought she would try Bones for Life and add a somatic piece to her practice. And she has used it extensively in, with her clients. So she shared that it did change her running. And, um, and she has a great interview on YouTube with us. If you go to our YouTube channel, Future Life Now, and you put in Andrea, you will get her interview. It's probably the best interview I've ever done on the work. I mean, the breadth of the work Andrea covers in her interview in such a brilliant way. Um, one of the interesting things she talks about, besides having this option to work with her aging clientele, uh, and then also, you know, trying to use pieces of it, right, to fine tune how people are on the reformer. You learn a language, you learn a way of teaching people to attend to themselves that will improve their yoga, that will improve their Pilates. You, know, you learn a way of observing that will improve all of those things as well. Um, uh, so she said, yeah, it did. It did improve my running. Uh, I wasn't really expecting that, but it made my running easier. But the thing that she really talked about a lot, I thought was pretty brilliant was she teaches, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old actors, up and coming actors in the universities. And she has found uh, the importance of having certain types of ways to teach people to ground themselves, to create relaxation states. And then she has found that she can use Bones for Life to help people come out of the experience of embodying another character in such a way that it's almost traumatic to them. So she helps them find their ground or release that embodiment and come back to themselves again using some Bones for Life techniques. Pretty brilliant. She's, a, she's an excellent, I, I know she's an excellent teacher, excellent teacher in, in every field that she's in. I just love her. So again, the um, bonesforlife.us, when you do sign up 
for an immersion one or the entire thing all the way to the end, you will get the three part series we just finished uh, as a value uh, to be accessed indefinitely. That will go away for everyone else uh, coming this coming Saturday. So you have this week to watch those replays. And then uh, after that, they will disappear, except for the people who sign up for the current 2022-23 year. I think then we just got to always end on remembering what, remembering, envisioning yourself, uh, awakening your own biological optimism, feeling that life force arising in you, knowing that you can help it arise in other people. And um, yeah, let's go from there. Let's go from there. We're going to take questions and answers now. I'm going to add Brian to the screen. And we'll just see which one of us is going to uh, talk. And I think if I get these hands raised right, I'll be able to figure it out this time. I couldn't figure it out last time, Brian, but I'm going to give it a go this time. And let me uh, let you unmute yourself. Hello, hello. Hey, Brian. Um, let me see here. We do not put the chats and the replays. Uh, for some reason. Okay. Okay. So we've got Aviva. Yes, you can finally ask your questions. And I'm going to spotlight add you to. Well, that, hooray. <laughs> uh, so I have a couple questions. Um, do you know the dates yet for the other follow up programs and for the retreat? I don't um, because that's it's because it's 2023. It's uh, it'll start the end of January. And usually what I do with the group is I buy, I think by July for sure, I will have all those published, but, but um, it has really worked out every time of Eva. I've never had it not work out in all these years. Uh, I think it works a little bit better to wait, excuse me, to wait and publish those and to publish them so far ahead. Um, and it's so much going on right now in the world that I just don't want to do another thing like where I publish these things and I have to retract them, then publish them, then retract them, republish them, retract them. It's a lot of work to keep finding a new retreat center based on COVID kinds of things. So I'd just like to be a little further along in the COVID situation. Um, but if for some reason, like you announce the date and we just can't make that date work, I mean, first of all, do they go over into Sundays? Um, it, could we do it another year or like if we decide, because I've, I've always wanted to do the Feldenkrais Christ training and I haven't been able to make it work. Mm -hmm. To be able to do most of this online would be incredible. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, it, yeah, you could do it in another year. Um, but I, again, I doubt that it's really going to, I mean, that's a small group by then we're down to about 30 to 20 people. So I can do a lot if people are communicating with me ahead of time, I, you know, then say, look, I've got this, I, I've got, my child is getting married, right? In the middle of that week, is there, you know, I can do a lot far ahead by taking that small group of people into consideration. Uh, where we're starting now is each class will have up to 50 in it. And I couldn't really manage that for that many people. But when you come into the teacher training, it'll be somewhere between 20 and 30 people. Mm -hmm. And like I said, does it go over onto Sundays? It, it does. Uh, the, that week? Cool. That week, you mean? Oh, I, I okay. I'm sorry. I can. What I can tell you is, I, here's what I made me didn't make clear. I can tell you that the teacher training is on Saturdays. The, every week, it's on a Saturday. So that I can tell you. Okay. So if you can't do Saturdays, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Um, then the actual week that we practice together, it will run from like a Saturday through Saturday evening through the following Sunday morning. So it's over slightly over seven days. Okay. But the other trainings will only be like, they'll still have those same like options of Monday or Wednesday. No, it'll be Saturdays. 
So everything else after the first one is Saturdays. That's correct. Everybody will consolidate down in to one teacher training and it'll be Saturdays. So if you okay. can't do Saturdays, it will be a problem for you. Okay. Yeah. Cute. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure Marshall this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess then I'll just do that first one and that's it. Ugh, I uh, was... I'm sorry. Anyway, it's fine. You know what? You're going to get started. You're going to get started. Okay, thank you. Thank you, dear. Let me... Okay, who else did I see? I thought I saw another hand. Immersion two and three will be on Saturdays as long as there is enough people to hold it. So we do need to see the commitments for that, but we're expecting it to work out fine. We're not, we're, we're really not concerned about that. Um, can we describe an immersion session in more detail? Yes, Sharon, we certainly can. Brian, why don't you do that? Yeah, an immersion. So immersion one, we gather with friends, into a circle around the world and begin to explore these ideas that Ruth Elon offers us through thir about 30 different processes. So we've experienced through the three sessions that we've had the last 10, last 10 days or so, two weeks together, maybe four or five processes. So it gets richer and richer and richer in these explorations of movement. And so we always have an opportunity kind of like we did to experience something and then talk about it, experience something and then talk about it and continue to watch essentially these big ahas keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we, we shared some lovely things, you know, through these, uh, these free sessions we've offered, but you haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> in my opinion. And there's so much goodness coming. And so we, these, the, the great gift too, is that it's in these nice bite-sized opportunities. So if you choose Mondays or Saturdays, it's four and a half hours together. But if you choose those Wednesdays or Fridays options, it's two hours together. So it's, you know, it's this opportunity to play with a few processes over a course of time and then continue to watch your, your own self change so much more quickly, in my opinion. And then time to play with it during the week, if you wish. And then we return again and play some more, you know, some new processes each week. And we do that five weeks in a row. You know, Can you say something about people that are concerned that it would be boring or they would get too tired? Oh, great. Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, we're, we're adults. We take care of ourselves during these sessions. So if we feel like, oh my gosh, I can't, I need to take a break. We go and do that. But I found through uh, doing this, especially online the last few years, is that most people um, find they're they're very engaged. Most people wish that the each each immersion session would not end. <laughs> you know, usually when we're ending the meeting, people are like, "Oh, I wish there, I wish we could stay on week because it's just so enlivening and so enriching." And so most folks uh, find the length of time just about right. Uh, and the great gift here too is that the this time what we're offering that. There's the four and a half hour option and the two hour option. So you can kind of gauge your own, um, your own attention span that way too. Yeah, the, and we do for the, the one that is uh, more the 10 a.m. to 2.30, there's a 30 minute meal break um, um, in, the, in the process. So Just that- like yeah. oh, good. good. Yeah, so that that helps a lot, um, but also because of what Brian said, where there's there's movement and discussion, then movement and discussion. Of course, there's a little restroom breaks and walking breaks in there, filtered throughout as well. We had last year uh, on one of our live casts. Uh, uh, what's what's our what's your gal's name that came? That's in her 80s that we I love, Marianne. Marianne. Marianne came and said something like, "I'm 82. I did the five hours." or four and a half hours, you people can do it. <laughs> I thought I wouldn't be able to, I did the whole thing. I didn't even need to be the, the big, uh, you know, uh, breaks that I thought I would need. She thought she would have to sign off. So Catherine, I'm getting ready to grab you now. Did you need to leave? Finally see you and get ready to grab you. And I'm sure Katrina is checking on that problem, David, for you uh, about why you were having trouble. Uh, no, did I leave 
Okay, I'm going to go to Gina and then I'll try to find Catherine back here again. Uh, let's see, I'm going to unmute her and then I'm going to add her spotlight. Okay, hey Gina. Hi. Um, given what you said when I asked you a question after the first session um, relating to first concussion, I would guess that you would probably recommend doing the Wednesday and Friday if I do this, not a four hour session. Would I be right? I'm sorry that I don't remember. I remember your face, but I don't remember what it was that you asked me before. I, I asked you about post-concussion um, issues. Oh, post-concussion issues. Yeah, I would recommend that you do the uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday. But if that doesn't seem doable to you, what I really recommend then is that you do part of the Monday or Saturday, and then you sign off and stay off the rest of the day. And then you sign back in two days later when the replay is available. And you, you, you see that the replays are divided by chapters and you can actually skip through. This is, we have a lot of really cool things that we offer, by the way. So our replays are divided by chapters. It's not just one big five hour dump that you just sit there and go, where in the heck am I ever going to find that thing? So um, you go by chapter and you, you'll be able to see what it is that you haven't covered yet. We'll also give you a, a little um, hand filled out worksheet that you mark off what you've done as you do it just for your own record. So you go, okay, I remember that. You can write yourself a couple of little notes about it. Um, so that you know what it is you covered and not covered. And also, Gina, so that you know things that really helped you yeah. and things that didn't, right? You go, not for me right now. You'd have a note over there that says, skip. Here, this one, you know, big, do, do, do. And that will be imp important because we're going to cover a lot of material. So that makes sense because I think actually four and a half hours in front of a computer screen alone is an issue for me. Yeah, and you won't um, you won't be even close to no, four and a half hours in front of a screen. But I agree with you; it's still an issue for you. Interaction still, so yeah, I think it's very demanding. That, that suggestion about doing part of it interactively and part of it on replay, uh huh, may be better actually than doing the split one. I'll, I'll think about it. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. yeah, it could very well be. It could give you a lot more flexibility. So yeah, I'm gonna gonna find Catherine here now. Oh, had her. I had her. I, I lost her. I had her. I don't know why she keeps disappearing on me. I'm going to find her. And then I'm going to thank you very much, Gina. We look forward to having you. And let's get that. And let me find Catherine back. And okay. Did you get the unmute message? There you go. I'll do it again. No, try again. While you're struggling around with that a little bit, I see that Katrina's trying to answer someone's question about what if reading the everybody's ahas made you feel like you weren't getting it? Love that question. I love that question. And uh, I'll, I'll answer it and then we'll go to you, Catherine. So, um, you know, First of all, you learn something about yourself right there that, oh, and when you, and, and this is important, this is not a, this is not a put down because a lot of us do that, but we learn something important about ourselves right there, which is that, oh, we have a couple of choices in that moment. One moment is, wow, that could be possible for me someday as an interpretation. And another one could be, wow, I'm such a slameel, I can't do anything. I never get it right. So we would hope that we would help you in the course of the program to be able to choose the first more frequently because it's, it's really in a um, graded culture where everything is about how we look and the appearance and blah, 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 blah. It is natural for us to fall in that first thing, which is I'm not getting it. I'm not getting, I'm not going to get it. Look at all these other people having these incredible responses, right? So it's totally normal. Um, so I, I just encourage you to not let that stop you from claiming what could be yours in the future. What you don't feel right now can almost just be that tendency to sort of 
go, oh, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. And also, we just haven't gotten the time yet with you to really give you a lot of different cues, different ways of sensing. And we will get the time with you in an immersion. This is such a fast paced way we've been teaching you. For those of you who thought, hey, that's really slow. Truthfully, it's really fast. <laughs> we're teaching you in a fast way because of the type of, of medium that we're trying to move people through. And we know people won't stick around real long when they haven't had these experiences before. So I really appreciate the question, Patricia. Catherine, let's hear from you, my dear. I disappeared because I thought I might be able to find it on the website, but I'm going to ask you anyway. And that is, are all the Saturday sessions, even those for teacher immersion, the 10 to 2.30 on Saturday times? Mm -hmm. They are. That's it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking the question. Uh, let me get that. Let me lower your hand. Let me talk to you while I do all my little things. I apparently need to talk to you while I do it. Uh, let's see. Who else do we have? Oh, I think I forgot to lower Gina's hand. I don't think she has another question. So let me get that. Anyone else? No one else? No one else wants to ask us anything under the sun? Like, it's your chance. Okay, here we go, Laura. I challenged myself to participate. Oh, there. Did I get me unmuted? Yes, we I hear challenged you. myself to say something because I've been quiet. Um, and I mostly want to say thank you. And then I'm going to sign up for the first immersion, not the whole big thing because what I'm learning from Bones for Life in addition to take it slow, more slowly physically is to not to rush in and try to overcommit, which I've done all my life. So that's one thing I just want to say. Number two, at this point in my life, I'm not a lifelong resident of Arkansas, but I was just curious, is there any Bones for Life in Arkansas? I didn't see any when I looked at the website. Uh, you I didn't know if anybody would. Did you look at the um, Foundation for Movement Intelligence website? Is that what you looked at? Who knows what I looked okay. at, but I, yeah, maybe that's there is a national organization called Foundation for Movement Intelligence, which would list. I mean, it's it's not real likely to be honest because it's such yeah. a new work. Um, and Brian, what do you remember? My goal. I said my goal was a few years ago when I started teaching in Cincinnati only. Do you remember that? I said, I, I wanted to get a lot of teachers going in Cincinnati yeah, because sure. I was traveling around teaching, but there was like this smattering here, 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 here. And I said, well, if we were to get a like a, a number of people going in Cincinnati, we could actually get something really moving because it takes more than one. It takes yeah. more than one teacher. People worry about competition, but you need quotes competition to spread a work. You absolutely need it. So, um, and so that's where I had been focusing for years. And then when COVID happened, uh, you know, it was suddenly like, okay. Uh, and now I feel like I can make a big difference, you know, with this whole thing that has happened, I can make a big difference. Brian can make a big difference in helping to have people in Arkansas too, but yeah. Well, no, I just, that, that was just a curious question, but yeah, I'm just so grateful that you are doing this online because I'm rooted here for a number of reasons, including an active grandchild. Um, but thank you very, very much. And I'll save the rest of my thoughts for when I sign up for Immersion Ooh. One. And I Yay! look forward to meeting you. Laura. Yay. Thanks, Laura. And by, I just, can I just say something to Patricia, who I think said she didn't feel you guys are all using different language. I come from one world, but I don't know the language of Pilates or I don't know the language of people that have already done this kind of work. So lots of things you guys said, I thought, well, maybe I know what that means, but I, I don't know what the wave feeling is like. I can't wait to learn. But just so much of the language we use, we come from all around the world and diff such different backgrounds that we might actually be getting it, but not, just not putting it in the same words in the chat. Yes. Sorry. Yes. That's absolutely right, Laura. That's fa fabulous. Yeah. But I look yeah. forward to meeting folks. Yes. I mean, quiet now. People really have 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 made relationships with each other. They've created study groups um, with each other and um, kept up in touch with each other. I've got study groups now that have been going, you know, two and a half years with each other that they're just loving hanging out with wow. each other. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. 
Okay, I'm going to get Colleen up here. While I'm getting Colleen up here, I just want to make sure, Sharon, that you got your question answered about the what kind of balance there is in the sessions between lecture and et cetera. And um, we usually offer immersion one once a year. Sometimes we'll offer it a second time, but not generally. And I don't see that there's room on our calendar for it this year. We've put our emphasis on trying to get this stuff going uh, this time all at the same time to make it a little easier, uh, a little easier for us. And Kathleen, you want to use Kathleen Carroll, you want to use bonesforlife.us to get to the uh, page. It should not take you to the wait list. Bonesforlife.us. Um, okay, go ahead, my dear Colleen. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wonder, would there be any written material, like little summaries of what we're doing? Mm -hmm. um, because I don't always want to jump into a video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just, oh, look at this little refresher, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's that's part of it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Brian, do you want to try to answer that? Or you want me to? Okay. Um, so according to the national guidelines, we're not allowed to uh, give manuals to people until they commit to the teacher training. So the manuals are quite in depth and. Uh, and honestly, I don't pr personally think that most people will use them in the beginning anyway, but, um, but that's the situation. What we are going to do is make the teacher manually, visually available, even though you can't download it or print it so that you could read through steps and make yourself some notes. And then I have a few things that are, I have shortcut notes on, but I don't have shortcut notes on everything um, that I'm going to make available to you as well. Yeah. And, uh, and there, you can also download or not download, but you can also listen to just the audio. You don't even have to have the video on and just listen to the audio as well. So that can help too. If people quit thinking they have to see, see well, something. Yeah. It's not so much the seeing is the, it's the audio. Sometimes I just want to look at something. So yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of times I do videos with closed captioning and, mm -hmm. you know, that thing, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. And, and I guess as a smaller group, there'll be more opportunities for questions and discussions. Is that the case? Um, Brian, you leave yourself unmuted, Brian. There we go. Yes. The, these immersions, it's just really incredible the amount of conversation around these, essentially these ahas. I mean, we've called it this just for this, this fun thing, this aha, but we, in the midst of immersions, you know, we have this experience and then we talk about it and the conversation gets richer and richer and richer as we continue on so much so that it's, it's really quite incredible. I never thought that zoom could be so friendly, mm -hmm. you know, and that like there are people around the world now that I know really well, you know, through talking about our experience with bones for life. And like Cynthia said, there are groups that continue meeting, you know, even after the immersions are long over, they form these study groups and continue meeting because they've become friends or at least very friendly with one another about this work and, and the importance of being able to share an experience and use words to share an experience can is pretty darn powerful. Uh, so okay. I, I think there's a lot of goodness in what's being offered these days on Zoom. Uh, Colleen, are you interested for your own health or as a teacher? Yeah for your own health. Yeah. yeah, I think, I, you know, because I have been a public <clears throat> crisis practitioner, I kind of mm -hmm. let all go with the COVID thing. It's sure, just, sure. You know, but, you know, yeah, I'm 74. So I'm like, well, you know, yeah, uh, but I'm, you know, doing more gardening now and that kind of thing. I've got a greenhouse tunnel now <laughs> and uh, just need to get some strength back and, uh -huh the balance thing and, and all of that. So yeah. uh, strength and easiness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things I like about this program is um, there is a value in having a weekly class for sure. For lots of people, a weekly or twice a week class there right. is, but I actually like these five hours. I think these four and a half hours, I guess it is four and a half hours. Um, and I think they allow what the, exactly what the word says in immersion. They allow enough information to get in 
that the habit pattern is really screwed around with a bit, you know, you know how we do in Feldenkrais training, right? Day after day. And so what I didn't expect to have happen um, is that it would be maybe even more effective on Zoom than it would be in person. And that appears to be true. And I think it's because it's, it's not contextual to my place. People aren't saying, when I walk through the door at Future Life Now or into your studio, I feel myself changing right away. And then they go back to their regular life. They right. are doing it in their own living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms. And so they're experiencing that calmer, that more, that more uh, balanced, that more stable, that more flexible person, that, that the one that has more comfort right there in their own home. And there has, I think it has more carryover. I would be really, that would be another really interesting research project. Just fascinating. And, and I just want to say how much I appreciate you individually. Uh, I did your, uh, with Carol, I think, your gate workshop mm -hmm. at the Feldenkrais Conference when I was in Asheville here. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I, ju I just fell in love with that. It just, yeah, it's it, a great program. I, yeah. Yeah. And I just think you present things in a way that work for me. Oh, thank <laughs> you, thank Colleen. You. Thank you. That's it. <laughs> Let's see here. Let me get. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to unmute Hillary and then look at another comment over here while she's getting herself set up. Let's see, there is a limited number of partial scholarships and Katrina set, indicated as she's correctly that you can find those by going through the website. You can get all the dates and times by clicking on, you know, hey, I just want to do this for my own health, or I think I might want to teach and I might want to be a, I might need continuing ed, or no, I know I want to teach. You click on either of those three options and it will give you all the details that you need to make a selection that you want to make. Um, okay. Hi, Hillary. Hi, Cynthia. I'm to unmute. No. I can hear um, you. Yeah, sure. Uh, when the hand's still there, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm still unmuted. <laughs> I know, I know um, it's hard. <laughs> what was the question? Uh, there are clearly, um, I'm sure you have this covered, but there, I, I would imagine that there are some disadvantages in not doing this in person. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having I've looked at lots of Bones for Life uh, work online um, and having seen the work that's done in partners and in groups with the RAP uh, and in pairs, you know, all the, 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 I mean, how, how do you cater for people and, and how are you able to cover those sessions or do you not want to go into that at this point? No, we, we've struggled a lot with it. So go ahead, Brian. Yeah, a number of the partner things we do still do online. We invite a a participant to find a friend if there's a friend available at that time and they're, it's safe in their own house and we get to explore that way okay and, um, so and people have found it like amazingly fun that way too to be able to share the work with somebody in their house and and also be able to be connected online at the same time so yeah, there's sure. quite a bit of that partner opportunity that is still possible um is there some that we we are not doing not able to do immediately yeah there are a few things but again the work is so rich that um uh, i'm blown away every time i teach it to be honest at how clever and wise ruthie Elon was to create this program of 90 or 92 processes or so that really speak to each other in such in such very uh layered ways like keep coming keep coming keep coming in all these ways to improve walking that um, I'm amazed by it. So with, with the ability to do it by partners or not partners, uh, you know, it, there's so much goodness. There's so much goodness. Okay, that's brilliant. And I guess you can take it away from a session. Take, oh. You can take it away and do it with a partner elsewhere, which, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. There are a number of folks, you know, in past immersions that didn't have a partner available at that time, but they were able to watch which is also a great gift to be able to watch somebody yeah. else move and go, yeah. oh, that's interesting. And then be able to pull it up on the replay when their partner is sure. available, when somebody is available in their house 
and then play then and then report back the next week, right? Like, oh, I didn't get a chance to do it during the session, but oh my gosh, I love this or I found this or I have a question about this. So again, it's, uh, I, I sometimes think it might be better, like Cynthia was saying. Okay. It sometimes it's better on Zoom in our own homes, in our own environments. And the other thing that I think it's worth noting too about Bones for Life is that it is, um, you, can, you can take it on the road, right? You, you can take it on the, in the sense that, you know, a lot of these ideas are immediately, could be immediately used in the course of a long walk. Right. Or a short walk for that matter. Mm -hmm. Or in the grocery store and you're like, oh my gosh, this is bothering me all of a sudden. Oh, I've got a I've got I've got an idea I can use here to be able to get me through the next aisle and then into my car and then back home. You know, and uh Final Christ and other somatic works, I think, have some of that, but this is like immediately applicable. You know, you can immediately apply these things and just with success, you know, what a gift that way. Thank you. Thank you both for your creativity and enthusiasm. You're clearly inspiring an awful lot of people. So I really appreciate your work. Uh, Hillary, you're in the UK, correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, Sylvia Gray does teach in the UK somewhere. So you might check her out if you really want an in-person experience. Do I think that in person there is more... Um, mm, maybe maybe more fun that comes when having a lot of people you know people in the yeah. same room throwing wraps around and trying out weird things together I, I mean I think probably there is more fun that way uh where I suspect that when you're in your own home it's more introspective uh and, and doesn't maybe get balanced out in the group dynamic you know the same way but uh but, you know, in terms of making it available and possible for people without having to travel when there, you have very few potential, Absolutely. you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, yeah, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. I'd noted Sylvia Gray's name from your session last week and thought I must actually look her up. Yeah. Um, she's, I haven't around doing it yet. she's quite a lovely, lovely teacher, quite a lovely person. Um, thank you so much, Hillary. I'm going to be going thank to you. Jane here in just a moment. And I, while I'm getting ready to go to Jane, if Jane will just uh, set herself up, I'm going to add a couple other questions, answer a couple of the questions here. So Gloria, I hope you found what you wanted. You need to go to bonesforlife.us on the website and you'll find all the information about the immersions. Marie, um, no, we don't quite cover all 90 processes and three immersions. We, we base it somewhat on the reality of a group. So we try not to just push things through as if um, it doesn't matter who's there in the room participating. We just have to teach our stuff no matter what. So we, that's our first thing as we try not to do. And then, um, and then we just also find it's really better to go back over some processes than it is to try to get through all 90 because people need repetition. And so while it was designed originally to be like, oh, teach all 90 uh, in, in a certain time frame, we have not found that to actually be to people's best interest uh, in the end. So we're, we're try always balancing that. Jane. Oh, okay, hi. Um, so immersion one, like it'll go, all these replays will go into the Future Life Now library. And, and it, into your own personal library. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, at the end of the course or during it for the replays? During it. Yeah, we allow up to 48 hours for us to get a replay up. If it's on a Saturday, we would like to allow a little longer just because the staff doesn't get back until Monday. So it might be Tuesday. But otherwise, it's 48 hours. Because when I do the replays, I usually just do it through the emails, but it'll be in the library. Yes, no, okay. not, yeah, it'll be on our site. You'll log into your Future Life Now account. Which I just never did the done. replays through that. Mm -hmm. um, the, for the free series, the replays are not there. That and way. how many um, processes do you expect to cover in the first immersion? I would say well, for sure 20, maybe 22, 23, mm -hmm. maybe 25, but it won't, we, won't, we won't push. 
we're going to, we're going to get through what we can get through without pushing. Right. Right. Okay. Just an idea. Um, yeah. I don't want to commit to all three yet. I think I'll just, you know, stick to the one. Mm -hmm. I am concerned about the, the four and a half hours, but, um, I think I'll probably do that anyway. I think you'll it's do not, fine. I think you'll do fine. It's a surprising experience. Yeah. It just seems like a long time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Hanging out with us. Okay. I'll be going to Kate in a moment. <clears throat> Jean asks, what can you do if you can't always make a session? And uh, Brian, can you answer that? Sure. There's the replay, All right. There's the replay is one option. Um, so you can catch up that week or when you're able. Another option too that Cynthia mentioned is say that you signed up for a Monday. <laughs> you can't make a Monday, but you could make the Saturday that week. You could, you could join the Saturday group that week if you wanted to do it live with the group. Uh, so there are two two different options that way to catch up through replay or to catch up with one of the other immersion groups. Yeah, and just but I want to clarify that if you want to be certified as a teacher, you do need to attend seventy five percent of it live. So um, if you have some big interruption that happens in your life in the middle of all that, and you need to make it up next year, that's likely possible. But um, I just everybody else that doesn't want to certify they can just use those replays to their heart's content we've had people from australia that have done the entire program on replay i gotta tell you i think that's dedicated um and others have stayed up all night every night every time for every session and you know stayed up for five hours in the middle of the night to watch it super dedicated um so there just you you think about what your own possibilities are and what it's probably available uh there within that kate Hello. I just wanted to say a big thank you for 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 winning. I'm so I'm so happy. I can't tell you how happy I am because I'm I'm actually in bed with COVID at the moment, um, which is why I'm a bit croaky. And so I've been doing the sessions. Um, I've had enough energy to do the sessions. And because I've got COVID, I've not been able to earn any money for about the last three weeks. So this is just this is just like a Christmas present. I'm just so excited. So thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, and I, I probably do have a question, but my brain isn't functioning very well. So I just look forward to seeing you on the on the first immersion. That, that's just wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I'm so I'm glad for you. And I hope that you have an easy recovery going here and that you're ready for Thank the you. you'll be ready for the class. Uh, oh, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm so, so excited. Thank you. Good. And you're from you're from the UK. I am from the UK. Um, I'm a fairly recently qualified Feldenkrais practitioner. And I run at the moment run a, a weekly class with um, older people. Um, so that's um, and plus some other classes. So that's that's partly my interest in, in Bones for Life, but also very much for myself, because I just those few things we did over those th three sessions were just mind blowing. And as you just said, they're, they're things that can so instantly be brought into standing in a supermarket queue, as you said, you know, all those sorts of things. You don't have to lie down on the floor. You mm -hmm. don't have to be in a special room. You can just bring them into you know into your life, standing on the bus, you know, or whatever. You can bounce your heels standing on the bus, and nobody will really bat an eyelid. So you know, I'm yeah, very excited, very excited. Thank good. you. Good, good. Thank you, Kate. Uh, we're going to go to uh, Nina, and then I'll a I'm going to ask a question while she gets herself set up. Let me take. I'm set up. I think I'm set yeah. up. Yeah, just give me a second here. I'm going to pick up one of these questions and then we'll come to you. Um, so Daphne, no, you can't pay in Canadian funds. I'm sorry to tell you that. Um, so uh, if you find that the conversion rate is uh, causes you financial hardship, you could apply for one of the partial scholarships. And yes, now Anina. Well, this is just a little pitch I want to give for the doing the Bones for Life online. Although I have not taken Bones for Life online, I am 
I did take the whole training with Ruthie. I think you were in that training years ago in New York. Um, but I've been doing um, two weekly Feldenkrais classes with um, a gentleman who's sometimes in New York and sometimes in Australia and sometimes in Greece. <laughs> yeah. And um, I feel like the gift, it's like the gift of COVID, like, you know, Kate got to stay home and do this. And for me, the fact that we can participate with great teachers like yourselves from, you know, remotely. And I think that Feldenkrais and Continuum are probably the two most adaptable movement um, sources that you can do on Zoom because you mostly are doing it with your eyes closed and you're inner oriented. And I think that there's an advantage to not having to go into a space with heaters that rumble and noises that happen and to just really you know, I mean, it depends. I happen to live alone and I happen to have my own dance studio. So I'm in a very Zen space when I do class with you. But, um, you know, if you had five children and three dogs and a noisy spouse working at home, it might be a different experience. Yeah. But um, I really think it's wonderful that you're doing this. And I wrote you a question about doing something to just kind of touch back in with the community, because I think that's a huge that's the thing that I'm missing. Is yeah. And what well, I, I would suggest that an answer to your question is if you just apply for one of the partial scholarships, because it's the easiest way for me to keep track of the request. Oh, okay. I, and then I'll, I'll take, help you with that, that question. Okay, you great. had a, spe you have a special question based on your having Aubrey taken the training. So that's what I'll, yeah, I've got that my certificate up on the wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> but it's been just, a long time. You would just use that format. That'll help me, help me work my way through uh, the requests. Okay, wonderful. And thank you for the gift of these three classes and amazing community of people. And Brian, amazing, wonderful. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah, that's right. I have to go into a meeting in about- Brian, that. when did you train with me? What year, what year did, did you, know, you start? I'm trying to remember. I remember oh. um, taking the train down to the Feldenkrais Institute. I fly out from California. So here, you guys, that's what you don't have to do is fly somewhere and spend a fortune on a hotel. I happen to have family in New York, but I think it was, I, I'm not in the room with my certificate. I think it was eight or 10 years. It was a long time ago. Well, if, you were, with me, was, if you were with me, it would have been 2004, the three or that four. That would be right. Yeah, because it was, um, it was when I was in the middle of my, getting my um, guild certification. I was in Larry Goldfarb's training here in Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. um, but Anastasi was helping her and Sonia Johansson was videotaping. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. yeah. I don't have COVID, but my memory is not so good for years. Well, that's, that's pretty good. You remember a lot of detail. 2004. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I want to thank you so much for that, uh, uh, offering those extra things. I'm going to go ahead and I want to say, Brian, uh, if you think you have to have 20 years experience to start using this and doing a good job with it. That's not true. Brian, when did you uh, start studying and when did you graduate? I, I think it was eight years ago, but now I'm starting to think I might have said, I've been, I think I might be saying eight years for a couple of years now. So maybe eight or nine years ago. I think it's something like that, that you started maybe nine years ago and graduated around eight or seven. Yeah. And I found that I could start sharing ideas pretty quickly. You know, it's with, with bones for life, like, you know, with my mom or with my friends or whatever, that the work was so immediately teachable mm -hmm. you know, that I could teach somebody how to bounce on heels. I could teach somebody some, maybe I wouldn't be able to teach somebody this full process, but um, without notes or something, but the work is, is nice bite-sized chunks of things and uh, very shareable in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Gloria asked if she's okay to take it for herself and then later decide to certify. Yeah, you just have to follow the guidelines for certification from the beginning, even though you may not want to certify right now. Uh, also said something about can't afford the certification tuition. So just remember that that's the only plan that gets put on a monthly payment plan. And so it if, if, if it's an amount of money per month that you can't afford, it's really a, it's a really good program for that. If it's something else, like you just know you can't afford the overall cost, then I understand that as well. Uh, Colleen, did I leave your hand up or did you have a new question? 
You have a new question. Okay. I thought maybe I messed up. No, no. Uh, I, I, it's just a clarification. Yeah. Uh, I thought you said that the second and third immersions were um, Saturdays? No. Okay. Okay. Because of I, I misunderstood. No. Immersions one through three are each offered on their own dates. And if okay. you go to teacher training, then it's all on Saturday. That's the Saturday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Nancy. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, am I on? Yeah, I am. Hi, Ryan. Hi, Cynthia. Uh, I'm a bones for lifer. Just, <laughs> yes, uh, you are. <laughs> I just completed immersions one, two, and three, and uh, my my plan when I uh, signed up uh, for the immersions has completely changed. I was going to stop uh, at the end of three because of my uh, time constraints, which I still have them, but not quite as bad. Uh, but I'm saying to myself, uh, you know, I'm, I'm into a way of life now. Uh, so I've got to, uh, I've got to keep going without a break. So I'll be, uh, I'll be joining you again. Oh, wow. Great. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, I would, uh, I'm not a, uh, uh, what, uh, a flag waver very much, but when I, wave the flag I really will wave it <laughs> for life. Bones for life. Bones for yeah. life. you got your placards ready huh I do well, well I think we've got to get for sure make sure we get you a t-shirt then so you can wear your you know I speak the bones for life language yeah for sure and uh yeah I I, I added a new uh, banner to my uh to my uh super space as I call it and uh, I had uh, developed a, uh, a little storyboard around uh, the way of being. I, and I did that way before. Um, I think I was doing the better back when I developed that. And I was also uh, dialing in to uh, Bruce Lipton. Mm -hmm. And so I developed a storyboard. And this morning I added a banner across the top that says biological optimism. It's a story of my storyboard. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah, I love it. I love it, Nancy. I know Brian has really enjoyed having you in the group this last time. Yeah. So fun. Look forward to seeing you soon. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. And I'm getting ready to go to Kathleen Carroll's. And let me see here. Oh, what am I struggling with something? What am I struggling with? It doesn't like, I can unmute her, but doesn't like letting me find her. She's not showing up. Is that because she's not on video? Maybe? Go ahead, Kathleen, are you talking? Let's see if I can find um, you because of... Oh, I'm shopping um, for fabric. Oh. Okay. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, You're fine. Can you, if, you, if you can hear me, my question was, is the cotton wrap knit or woven fabric? Uh -huh. We like, uh, you can play around with it, but what we like getting is a medium weight, 100% cotton. I know, uh, but is it woven or knit? It's woven. Thank it's woven. you. The, the knit, I just think will give too much, but so I would start with the, I would start with the cotton and and it's if you're going to buy your own it's seven and five eighths yard or seven meters and it's forty five inches wide. Right, that's what it said on the on the website. Yeah, great. Just, yeah, okay. Good, thank you, Kathleen. Well, good to I'll know. I love that. having you, dear. Oh, I'll look. Uh, those I, wraps of it's 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 all about the wrap. <laughs> all about the wrap for you of course you're a fabric you're a fiber woman why would it would absolutely be i still got my lovely towel that you made for me a few years ago and oh, kathleen delightful. kathleen was with us for those of you who read about the uh howler monkeys was in the costa rica retreat when we were doing the bones for life tantrum yes and no and we would go yeah no and then we'd stop and we'd wait and then suddenly the howler monkeys would go 
right now. We're claiming this space. You, know, you all don't get it. <laughs> I, I'm smiling. I'm smiling and remembering very fondly. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. And uh, Viva, did I miss you earlier? Did I not lower your hand? Just to make sure that you, if you have another question, I want to get it. No, I did. I did lower my unlower my hand. I just had one more question, which is that if we did do the three part program and then somehow figured out with somebody, another trainer or something to do the teacher training, mm -hmm. um, would that certification work for that? Or mm -hmm. no, you have to go through the whole thing with the same. No, person. it will work. It will work. Yeah, no, it'll work. Um, and um, The only, the only caveat is they have to be teaching in a somewhat similar format, but most of us are. So we don't all have to teach it exactly the same way. So we have a little bit of leeway. So you do have to find someone else that's ready to pick you up and take you through the didactic uh, student teacher, blah, 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 that, that whole piece, the advanced study. But, um, but yeah, you can take it on with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And would you be able to suggest anybody or um like wait until we get to the end of yeah this. i would wait at this point otherwise if you want to just look on uh, at foundation for movement intelligence.org uh and see if there's anybody else that you could do that but uh, i'm going to make a big case for the style that we've developed for teaching uh, i think it's highly worth doing it with us if you can so <laughs> I know. Right. And uh, each session is available 48 hours for only 48 hours afterwards. Is that correct? Oh, no. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. It takes us 48 hours to load the replay up. The sessions are available indefinitely. Okay. If, but not, oh, if we're also doing just the, without. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever okay. you attend, whatever you pay for and attend in the Bones for Life program is available to you indefinitely, whether you sign up for teacher training or not. All right, great. You'll have access you. to it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to be going to Lynn here in a moment. Me. These are great clarifications because it's so much information, isn't it? Too much information. So, Lynn, I'm going to grab my Lynn here. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Sorry, I, I I missed the first hour. I put a thing in the chat, but I didn't have an answer. So I I, I couldn't. I do voluntary counselling, so I had one at two o'clock, which was really frustrating. I've so enjoyed the other three sessions, and I wanted to know if this session is going to be a replay because yes. it's more like an administration thing you've been doing. So thank you, because I I haven't heard anything you've said for the first hour. So that's brilliant. So will that be on Facebook? Um, the replay, yeah, I'll put it up on Facebook and, and, but we'll also put it on the replay page that we, right. you've been using. So you'll see it, on, it, it takes forever because these have been so long, they've been loading. Yeah. So I'm not getting them up until like nine 30, 10 o'clock at night. I'm so sorry about no, that. No, but no. I mean, I like work at it all day trying to get it to load. I, it's been yeah. just, they're so I big. I didn't know there were any offers or anything that were sort of midnight tonight or something. That's why I. I yeah. But then it, the, it'll be up. Um, so <laughs> certainly by tomorrow morning and probably early evening, because this will be a shorter okay. session. Thank you, Thanks for your enthusiasm yeah. and wanting to see it. Thank you for the lovely work you do because I've really benefited. I love the pumping, the heel pumping. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've been doing that at odd times because it uh, it also disconnects your brain from what you actually might be panicking over. <laughs> ah, it's a great grounding technique, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I love it for that. Yeah, I agree. Yes, I need to read your your stuff that you've told everybody about today, and then I can come back to you if I if any anything that I would absolutely. like to do. Absolutely. The staff is always available to you at support at futurelifenow.com. And they know a lot about the program. And if they can't answer it, they'll refer it over our way to help okay. you. Um, great. Thanks. We love to we would love to have you for sure. Okay. Then, uh, so somebody wrote that they already registered for the immersion one, but now realize if there was a payment plan for the teacher training, they could afford to take it. What should they do about that? You send an email to support at futurelifenow.com and we will help you get that switched over in some fashion or another. You might have to refund and start over, but we'll, we'll help you with it for sure. 
Wow, what a wonderful time together. And I expect these three immersions to completely fill up. Mm -hmm. So I would personally not wait long if you don't have to wait long to make your decision. Um, but, you know, a lot of us are last minute. So that's why you get so doggone many emails from us is because so many of us are last minute and need to have a multiple touch points before we can feel like we can go ahead and make a decision. So we know that and we'll be happy to send them to you until you register or say you're not interested. And um, yeah, Brian, you want to say anything as we're getting ready to close up? Yeah, I'm so excited. I wish we started tomorrow. <laughs> all this enthusiasm about these big ahas and all these good things. Yeah. But all in good time. All in yeah, good time. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brian, one of the great gifts you bring is your enthusiasm, for sure. You're one of the most enthusiastic people I know about, about life. About life. Thank, thank you, friend. Thank you. Yeah. So, well, it's, uh, just let me grab... Let me just get these a little bit. This is a program that we will not uh, we will not issue refunds on unless there's something really unusual. So that question I just saw pop up. Uh, we really, um, you know, we commit to having a group size and sticking with it, and we want you to commit to it. Pain, uh, in terms of having too much pain, I believe I've seen this over and over again, that as long as you allow yourself to listen to your own response and do only what is right for you and not think I, in order to get my money's worth, I need to sit there and do every single thing in this next four hours. That is an error in thinking. What you're paying for is to get results. You're not paying for the four hours. You're paying to get results. And so as you go through the process, you're paying to learn to pay attention to yourself. You're paying to learn how to know when too much is enough. You're paying attention to know what do they mean when they say light? What do they mean when they say 20% or less effort? What do they mean when they say to um, notice if your breath is getting interrupted and if that is to slow down even more or to take a break. Or when I notice that my mind is wandering, that I should actually use that as a sign to take a break. So the things that you're paying to learn are much tinier, subtler than when we look at this, this excitement we've been building, right? We've been building this excitement but when we come into the class together after this um, big, bold rollout, if you will, it's going to be much quieter. And, and we're going to be really encouraging you to claim moment to moment the best that you know how, your own health, your own pace. And then we're going to be seeing if we can coach you to get better at that. So I do think it's a good program for people with chronic pain because we're always used to overriding um, our signals to the point that we don't even know them anymore. Because if you paid attention to them all the time, it would be, uh, would, feels like it would just stop our lives from being able to function. Um, so this, this topic of chronic pain, I, I see your comment here at the end. I just, I want to take a minute to really spend with it because it's, it's, it's an important topic, a, to a very important topic. Um, and if you want to ask more about that, you can write support at futurelifenow.com and I can chat with you a little bit by email, but really so, so valuable. I know what it's like to be somebody who has chronic pain and to come into classes and hurt themselves and then suffer from it and um, have I, have I ever aggravated conditions with Feldenkrais or Bones for Life? Yes, I have, but I'll tell you, it's been nothing like what I've done in other types of classes. So for me, it really allows me to, um, it really allows me to, um, oh, 
continually still today after all these years get better at sensing, feeling, claiming, stopping, slowing down, doing the imagination, doing nothing at all, coming back to it. And, and um, I, I think it's a significant movement in a different kind of direction for people that have, have uh, any kind of chronic pain challenge. Um, so the person who's asking about osteoporosis, watch the talk. To watch the talk, that was a long talk. My gosh, it was still a great, it was a great talk. People love that talk. So it's on replay, the replay page that'll be sent out later with this will also have the osteoporosis talk. I'm gonna pop you all up here, everybody on video for a second. So turn your video off if you don't wanna be on it because I'm about to show you to the world because I wanna say goodbye to everybody that's here and hung out with us and kept your cameras on and. Okay, good, 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 good. Lots of you. Oh, yes, good. Turn more cameras on. Beautiful. Turn more cameras on. I love it. I love it. Make me change pages because there's a lot of people here, actually. Just a lot of you have your cameras off. Keep going. Keep going. Yes, good. Okay. Pum, 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 pum. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. So fun. <laughs>